One of the areas we are trusting God for supernatural shift this year is the area of miracles, signs, and wonders. Job chapter 9 verse 10, the Bible said, God doeth great things past finding out and wonders without number. God does wonders that cannot be numbered. And we are going to experience many of that this year. Somebody who told me the other day, text, I think he sent a message, I think somewhere in this North Central here. He said the number of miracles and things that God has done through this ministry, we don't even have an idea at all. Because a young man went to his village and a well-known blind woman was, he passed by the blind woman and kept on going, assuming and supposing that she was blind as she had ever been and was not seeing him. So the blind woman said, so and so person's son, why are you passing without greeting me? This was in Benway State. And the young man was shocked. Sorry, ma, and greeted. Then he went to one of the people and said, what's happening? Oh, he said, the woman is seen. He said, since when? Oh, she went to crusade for Dr. Pastor Paul and then she came for crusade. She went there, her eyes opened. Inside village. Wonders beyond number. Today, your own wonders will come. I know you have seen miracle signs and wonders in your life, through your life. But this year, it shall shift levels. What are the secrets of the supernatural? If I want to see God at work, like never before, what will be the secrets? Number one is the presence of God. Secrets of the supernatural, number one, the presence of God. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. And they went everywhere, preached everywhere, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders. With signs for the presence of God. First Kings 17, 1, Elijah said, Before God, whom I stand, there shall be no rain nor dew. If the presence of God in your life intensifies, miracles multiply. If the presence of God around you intensifies, wonders will multiply because the presence of God is the natural climate for the supernatural. What we call miracle is the normal things in, around God. Is the presence of God. Number two is the death of self. Anywhere self decreases, God increases. In John chapter 2, verse 21. The Bible speaking said, sorry, John chapter 2 verse 11, this beginning of miracle did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. 
And he manifested forth his glory. Whenever self dies, the glory of God multiplies. That was what he said in John chapter 11, verse 23. The hour has come. 12, 23. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And what is the process? Except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and dies. It abides alone. But when he dies, if he dies, he bringeth forth much fruit. The reason why God has not shown forth in many people's life is because of too much self, too much pride, too much arrogance, too much tendency for vain glorification. John chapter 3, verse 30, he said he must increase but I must decrease if God must increase in you and around you you must decrease that person that wants to be praised that wants to be applauded that wants to be visible that wants to be overly popular that person that is struggling for attention must die so that God can have attention. The secret of the supernatural. People think that fasting and prayer is, is the number one secret. I put it as number last. Because you can fast with arrogance and pride. And ostentation and the struggle to get power. So that people can know you too are powerful. You are wasting your, your fast. It's the death. Of self. Anything that is competing with you in my life, Lord, let it die. Anything that will cause people not to see you in my life, let it die. Whatever is making me more visible than you around me, let it die. The death of self is a way to the supernatural. Number three is the power of the spirit. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be proof producers, evidence producers. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall be proof producers. You shall produce proofs. You shall produce evidence. You sh your life shall be evidential. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Concerning Stephen, the Bible said he was full. Acts 6 8. And Stephen full. Of faith and power, and that's the power of the Holy Ghost, did great wonders and miracles among the people. I'm, I'll come to that. Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Let 2020 be the year in which you, you will be Holy Ghost loaded. Be filled. You know, it is one thing for the bottle to have water. But it's another thing for the water to have the bottle. Do you understand what I mean? Put water up to halfway in Coca-Cola bottle. It is half filled. Some people are like that with the Holy Spirit. Some people are a quarter filled. Some people are half in terms of the overflow. Some people are almost to the brim. Some people are overflowing out. But there are some people. They have the bottle in the, the water in the Coke bottle and the Coke bottle is inside a river. So there is water in the bottle and there is a bottle in the water. It's overflowing. At that realm, anything is possible. The fullness of the spirit. Where your prayer life is almost immeasurable. 
The power of the Spirit is number three. Number four is the fullness of faith. The fullness of faith. We already read that. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Stephen was full of faith. And of course, he was full of power. And he did great wonders. It's not possible to be full of faith and be empty of power. Every time you are full of faith, power is natural. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Every time you are full of faith, you will be full of power. Every light you see out of scripture fuels your faith. And when your faith is fueled, miracles flow. Somebody say, I'm not a pastor. I'm not talking about being a pastor. I'm talking about your life, your business is filled with miracles. Your, your career is filled with signs and wonders. Everything about you, are, things are happening that your colleagues cannot explain. Miracle is not limited to being a pastor. When I was a medical student, I saw miracles. Medical doctor, I saw miracles. I entered an exam hall having practically revised every single question that was to come at every single one. Medicine final, part two finals, medicine. Every single question. So you went there and you saw everything that it's like seeing what you are going to write ahead. Where your life is filled. Miracles. The fullness of faith. Number one is the presence of God. Number two is the death of self. Number three is the power of the spirit. Number four is the fullness of faith. Number five is walking in love. Walking in love. Because even faith Walk it by love. Was that Galatians 5, 6? Or 2 Corinthians 5? Faith, walk it by love. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith, which walk it by love. So love will walk your faith and faith will walk the signs. Beyond that, God is love. First John chapter 4, verse 8. So to, to be full of love is to be full of God. And when you are full of God, you are full of wonders. No wonder Jesus moved with compassion all the time and miracles happened like water. Matthew chapter 14 verse 14. Anybody inviting you into bitterness is inviting you into, 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 into inviting you onto natural existence. He wants to excuse you from the supernatural. Anybody inviting you all into hatred is trying to cut you off from the supernatural because the supernatural thrives on love. You have a heart for God. You have a heart for people. Then things happen. That was number Five, walking in love. Number six is walking. I gave two scriptures, walking in love. Matthew 14, 14. First John chapter four and in verse eight. Please place all those references in Galatians chapter five and in verse six. Walking in love. Uh, number six is walking in holiness. A conscience that is void of offense towards God and towards man. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Amongst the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness? Fearful in praises, do in wonders, hallelujah. Every time you want to see the gloriousness of God, release holiness. He is glorious where there is holiness. 
every time you want to see the gloriousness of God. Holiness is nothing but the exercise of the conscience to be void of offense towards God and towards man. Acts chapter 24 verse 16. That is what holiness is all about. Exercising the conscience to be void of offense toward God and towards man. As much as it lies in your power, your conscience is clear with God, clear with man. When a person lives a life of lying and cheating and duping and unclean lifestyle, you, will, you won't be able to see the supernatural. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14, he says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Not just see the Lord when you get to heaven. See the Lord around you. You can't see the Lord at, at work in your life. You can't see the Lord in your sphere. If your life, you have a conscience that is permanently defiled, the power Walking in holiness number seven is the power of worship. It's a secret of the supernatural. Worship and of course praise because God inhabits the praises of his people. We just saw now that he is fearful in praises. Fearful things happen when his praises flow. Fearful in praises. Second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 13 and 14. We saw how when the Levites praised and worship, the glory of God arrived. Fearful in praises. The power of worship. I'm not talking about singing when you are in the church. I'm talking about a heart that is bubbling. Bubbling with his praise. Bubbling. He said in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, Be not drunk with wine. That leads you to dissipation. That is the word excess. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? How? Speaking to yourselves in psalms, in hymns, spiritual songs. Shekobagadagala. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. It fills you with the Spirit. And when that happens, the miraculous and the supernatural is natural. The power of praise and worship. And number, number eight, the power of the fast. This is put last because we should do the other things first and do them well. Then we can emphasize on this. This is put last. Is this not the fast I have chosen to undo heavy burdens? Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, all the way to verse 8. Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and by fasting. The supernatural, the fast. The fast is an intensification of spiritual power. The season we are in now, as we are praying and fasting now, there is the intensification of spiritual power. And I believe that in the course of this 21-day fast, power will come. And somebody is absolutely shifting levels. Lift your right and say, Father, I receive the grace to abide in your presence. I receive the grace to see the death of every selfishness in my life. To connect with the power of the Spirit. To flow in the fullness of faith. To walk in love. To be delivered from hatred and bitterness. To walk in holiness, in a clear conscience. To walk in the power of praise and worship. And to be disciplined in the fast. I receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. Get set to flow in the realm of the supernatural. Stand up on your feet and let's give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise and let's worship him. Let's honor him, let's adore him. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Magnify him. Glorify his name. Worship him. Honor him. Adore him. Go ahead. As we begin to thank the Lord even tonight 
for his message. Thank him for what we received. Thank him for the testimonies that are about to come.